Podcast, Episode 3. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is the Twin Theory Podcast. Episode three. Episode three. So we hope you all have been uh, having a fantastic one. It is officially fall. Officially fall. And it is cold outside. At least at nighttime and first thing in the morning. It's like 45 degrees out here. But it still feels really nice. I mean, at least I like it. Maybe oh, you don't like it. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not really. I'm more of a at least 60, 65, 70 degrees. Like, you know, 45 is a little cold. But it's really good running weather, though. It's okay. We we can agree to disagree okay. on that one. All right. All right. Anyway, uh, welcome back, everyone. This month we have a different topic, of course, but definitely want to thank all of you all that reached out last month on Black Girl Magic. Yes. We got a few things in the mail, even from. Some of our listeners about Black Girl Magic going on in your community. So that was really cool to read up on. Absolutely. We got some stuff in the mail. We got some great emails. So definitely uh, glad to hear you all. You know, it's a a subject that, you know, is, is very relevant to a lot of people. Yes. So getting into this episode, this episode, our October episode is ding, 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 oh, two opportunity overload opportunity overload and you guys might be wondering okay what is that where did that come from so i was talking to marissa a few weeks ago because you know we talk all the time all the time all the time all the time and i was a bit overwhelmed as i am all the time to- <laughs> you are in the time. overwhelmed all, all the time, the time. <laughs> yeah <laughs> But, uh, so I was in a little bit of a pickle. Actually, I'm still, still there a little better, but, um, I had this opportunity and, um, it wasn't work related. It was one of the extracurricular organizations or one of the extracurricular things that I do. There was a huge opportunity for me to be able to lead. And it's something that I've always been interested in and I've always wanted to do. But now I'm kind of in a position where I'm doing a whole lot, a lot of stuff, lots of stuff are going on between work and things that are going on with work and, and, uh, extra duties at work. And then outside of work, there is a whole lot that I've been involved in a whole lot, a whole lot of different organizations and community service events and stuff. And so now I'm like, Ooh, I got this huge, great opportunity, but now I'm hesitant Because I'm like, I want to take the opportunity, but I also don't really have no time. Not at all. I ain't got no time. So I went to risk and we're talking about it and we're like, hmm. This might be a good topic. This might be a good topic to talk to you all about because we think that it's something that a lot of young adults, especially hitting that, you know, 30 age range where, you know, you've graduated from college or maybe, you you know, you didn't go to college, but you start working straight out of high school, but you've gotten to a point where you started to establish yourself and you have really starting to take, um, you know, you kind of are interested in a lot of different, you know, opportunities and and exploring different things. And you're really just kind of learning about it and just helping out here a little there. And then after a while, you know, you start to get into the roll over to this position where you're like, okay, this is a full blown thing. You know, if it was something real small that you were just interested in a few years ago, now it's something else. Right. You have the opportunity to lead it. You have (laughs) right. To lead it. Right. So it's uh it's something that we thought would be really 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 relevant. So what one thing that I I'm, I'm gonna start off because I always start asking you questions first. I don't know why I, you know I always put you on the spot always. first. I, just, I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, but I got to put you on first. So. I thought the Otis went first, but whatever. <laughs> so the first question, okay, yes. <laughs> Marissa, how many things do you focus on at one? time or how many how many opportunities will you actually let you know come into that brain matter and you actually think of like oh this could actually be feasible or something i'll actually do. do 
I don't know if I have a number in mind, like a magic number. I think personally for me, I always think, what can I do and do it at 100%? So if I feel like I can do three tasks or lead three different things and do all those at 100% without sacrificing a whole lot of sleep or other things, I will do it. But if it starts to look like, okay, now I'm taking on four or five, six other things, and now that means that I'm going to have to drop down from doing something at 100% to now doing it at 90% or 80% because I have to make time or make space or make room for some of these other things, then I have to start reevaluating, am I taking on too many things? So I just try to look and see, can I do this at, you know, at my best at 100%? And if I start to have to do it at a, a less, you know, percent, if you will, or not do it to the best of my ability, then it, it's kind of an indicator to me that it's too many. So I don't think I have a magic number, but I just kind of assess, can I do it to the best that I can do it? Or am I going to have to half do it so I can do other things? But what about you? Yeah, so um, this is, I am a work in progress. So okay. let me go ahead and start off and say I am very much so a work in progress. I do not have a magic formula. I have not narrowed it down to percentages. You're like, oh, yeah, if I'm working on this 100%, 90%, 80%, 10%. Uh, well, you know yourself, no. Well, for me, it's it, this is a very difficult subject because I don't like to let any opportunity fly by the radar. I like to be able to do anything. I always can see the the glass half full in any situation. So it's like, unless it is something that is going to take a lot of, of, of time and money, and I mean a lot of time, Every day, it would be something that would it be an opportunity that I know I have to work on it every day and potentially for a few hours a day. It's like, I know I don't have that much space, but it's it's really difficult for me to say, how many do I manage at one time? Because on any given day slash week slash month, I can be managing anywhere from one to maybe 10 at a time. So uh, that's something I still need to explore. I probably should have been taking notes while you were talking. <laughs> oh, because, uh, this is a question that I came up with because I am still struggling. Of course. Okay. Yeah, you know. Still struggling. But so. I think it's something that you kind of learn as time goes by. So if you talk to somebody that's a bit more seasoned, a bit older, they've been here, they've done that. They've kind of learned themselves and learned how to manage this. So I think early on, it is something that you're going to struggle with. It's definitely, that's good that you mentioned talking to somebody a little more seasoned, somebody older, and maybe in one of our, you know, other episodes, we'll talk about mentors. Okay. That's definitely something that, you know, I think we should have at some point in your life, someone that you can talk to that can kind of help you out with the crazy. It's very true. <laughs> very true. That, that can help you out with the crazy. So uh, brings me to the next point is... At what point, since you have this down to a formula, and I, oh, do not, I, I don't I have it down, do not to, have this down okay. to a science, to an equation, like you just <laughs> so gave goofy, me numbers and percentages. Okay, and what, in the, what is the so, next question? <laughs> the next question. <laughs> at what point did you, do you realize that, all right, I got too much going on? Like, at what point do you kind of do a little self-evaluation or you just kind of start to go, okay. How many things am I working on today outside of work? You know, like right. how many things have I worked on this week? Did I even give myself some time this week? Like at what point do you kind of have to pump the brakes or do you realize you got too much going on? I think you almost answered it while you were explaining the question. Hmm. And you said it, at some point, do you ever get like, do you, uh, did you put time aside for yourself? And I think that is, at least for me, one of the indicators. So if I feel like I'm doing so much and I'm like, oh man. I didn't even put side, you know, time aside for myself. I probably need to get a haircut or, you know, some sort of physical maintenance or, or something to that degree. I haven't washed <laughs> my car. Crazy. <laughs> right, right. Crazy, I haven't washed crazy. my car. Like things are just kind of falling by the wayside because I'm focusing so much. And then for me, another one is sleep. If I'm not able to sleep because, you know, I'm up thinking about something or something to that degree is kind of indicators to me. Now, yes, there are times where you will have to sacrifice some sleep and other things like that to get a job done, but it shouldn't be all the time. So if you feel like you're having to sacrifice sleep and sacrifice doing some of the things you like doing or missing a hair appointment or, or something like that, then that's probably an indicator that you're not uh, giving yourself enough me time and that you're 
probably putting too much time towards some of the other things that you're doing. That's what I would say. That's the, that, no, that's a very good point because I think that that is my uh, metric, if you will, of understanding like, wait a minute, Court, you might have a little too much going on. I'll walk in and be like, all right, when was the last time that I made up the bed? <laughs> Jesus. Like, I think of the same thing the... when I walk by your room. Like, <laughs> when oh, really? Really? <laughs> really? 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 <laughs> anyway, uh, I start to see, you know, like I'm a very clean person. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Yes. Uh, but sometimes some things can be in disarray, right. if you know what I mean. It's clean, but it's in disarray. Like, okay, you need to put your shoes in the closet. Like, we need to put some of this stuff together. And most of the time for me, though, I guess the issue that I have is I don't realize it until I'm in it. I mean, I'm in it hard. I'm like, well, I can't. I already took the opportunity. I'm in it, and I just got to thug it out, and maybe I'll make a better decision next time. Then next time mm-hmm. comes, and it's like, next time. Next time comes, and it's like, wait a minute. We're in an infinite loop here. Oh, yeah. So so for me, you know, again, I'm just taking notes this entire episode because this is just a, this is a working. I am a work in progress yes. when it comes to this. Uh, it is very hard for me to turn down an opportunity. Again, there's some opportunities some people will give you and it's just automatic. Heck no, I yeah, can't do it. I can't do it. I just not. can't. Sorry. But there's some stuff that the more I think about it, I, I start to think about all the positives and it's like, well, maybe I can squeeze that in. I'm already not going to sleep to one thirty, but so what's two o'clock you know it's 30 minutes later it's, it's not that bad you yes. know, I can do that. and so whereas you you're very good at being able to say like nope i'm going to sleep at this time and then right. I, I look yep. out my room and the lights is out and you knocked out i'm yes. like <sighs> and sometimes you just have to stop you just have to know when to stop and then when to pick it back up or at least that's how i am maybe somebody that's listening has a different mindset so please we're gonna need some feedback on this one y'all i will definitely if you want to send a personal email <laughs> and address it to courtney i am looking for all the feedback in the world yeah <laughs> on this topic okay yeah um so okay so it brings me to this 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 next point or question this is not just something I feel like, you, you know, everything that you've learned, Marissa, I feel like, you know, you have learned it. It, mm-hmm. it. It's, it didn't come initially. So what was the process? How did you get to a point where you could narrow down, Hey, these are the opportunities I'm taking versus the ones, um, you know, that I'm not taking. What, what, what did you do? At what point did you go, okay, let me come up with whatever this formula or figure out whatever is going to work for Marissa so that I can, figure out how to manage. I think at one point in my life, I had a whole lot going on and I recognized it. And then I just kind of looked in and made the decision. Do I have to do everything right now? Are there certain things that I'm doing that I could actually pick up later on a couple of months from now and it still be okay. And I think sometimes you have to look at that. What is necessary for now what things are critical to address now, and then what things could you maybe put off for a couple of months or even a couple of years? I mean, you decide, all right, you know, this isn't as important now, or this is still going to be around a year from now or two years from now. So maybe I can put this to the side and work on whatever it is you're working on and then pick up that other item two years later or a year later. So that that's generally how I look at it. Is it what's what's critical for now, what's relevant now, what's more important now, and then what can potentially wait. I also look and see if there's something that I'm doing, maybe I don't have to lead the effort. You see what I mean? Maybe I can just kind of help out or guide or consult or, or something to that degree. So it doesn't take up as much of my time. Gotcha. Yeah, I, uh, th- those are good points that you made. Definitely sitting back and determining what it ha- needs the immediate attention Yes. versus what can you wait for a little bit later. That's a mindset. That's a, that's a fantastic thing, Marissa, that you have, you have a total understanding of that at 30, <laughs> because again, Courtney, this is, uh, this is a self-help uh episode for me <laughs> because everything is immediate <laughs> e- so everything is absolutely immediate what do you mean a year you know how many things can change in a year you know i and and to to kind of go into this a little more i think the thing is just backtracking a little bit these opportunities didn't just 
happen. Uh, again, there, there are things that, like I mentioned before, we might have been interested in a lot of different things. And we kind of gave a little effort to a lot of these different interests. But I think another point to be made is over the years, the more you know, the more you're kind of interested in, you know, sure. the more you're exposed to, the more you're interested in. I think of the things that I'm involved in now with uh, food bank, with sign language, with, you know, the ministry, everything. It's, I didn't know that graduating from college, but the more I knew and the more that I knew I could be involved in this, the more I wanted. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's so many opportunities out there. Uh, it's so hard. It's so it I'm, I'm working. I promise I'm working. I on promise. It. I promise I'm working. On right. It. Right. What is define working? Uh, on working it. on it is, is acknowledging I have started that to a discuss problem. it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. The number problem. one thing is I have a problem. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So I'm working on it. That's number one. Now we'll work on what number two is later. Okay. <laughs> Okay, don't come for me. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, so that's a good point that you made. And um, but on the flip side of this, for let's say this is a young adult or this is a person that maybe they spent a lot more of their time uh, focusing on work, you know, and they didn't or they declined a lot of other opportunities because they really were trying to focus on work or there was really one thing they wanted to focus on. And now they're in a position where they do want to look for these, uh, you know, opportunities. Some people feel like, oh, I've missed a whole bunch of opportunities because I'm older now or whatever. I have kids or I'm married or I don't miss the opportunities. You know, what advice do you think? Um, how can they still explore, you know, opportunities and get involved with other things, even though, you know, that wasn't something they may um, have really focused their energy on initially? Just start. Honestly, just start. I think about editing. You know, I edit books and edit all sorts of stuff. And so when that started, I didn't just jump in and start editing a book because I didn't even know who to reach out to. I started with reaching out to people like, hey, do you need somebody to edit your paper for class or, you know, your essay questions? And then after time continued, people started reaching out with longer things like, oh, well, actually, I'm working on a short story or I'm working on a book. Can you start to look at it? But the biggest thing was just jumping there and starting somewhere. So that for me, that's what I would say is depending on what it is that you're interested in. Of course, the first would probably be identifying what you're interested in. But whatever it is, just just start. And you. it could be if it's with a group of people reaching out and seeing if they will allow you to jump in and do whatever their group is doing. Or it could be as simple as, hey, reaching out to people, do you need to look over this material? You know, do you need that edited? And then over time, that might span into something much bigger. Yeah, definitely. That's a good point. Reaching out to friends. I'll definitely say <laughs> family. Yes. Reaching out to friends and family. There's always people in your family and friend circle that need help or can can link you with an opportunity. Yes. Definitely with your editing. I think I, I'm your number one client. I, I asked Marissa for everything. I think Marissa's edited my resumes, my emails, my text messages, everything. <laughs> Not your text message. I'm well, pretty sure maybe you have edited a text message. Okay. I've been like, hey, Riz, can you look at this text? <laughs> <laughs> that's so bad but i use you for everything so i definitely want to encourage those people out there if you don't know where to start start within your circle whatever that is if that's your friend circle your family circle uh maybe really close co-workers or something just start there and then you know again once you start to get to know people i think it'll you know the opportunities to just grow and grow and grow from there but again now take heed to the advice that Marissa gave you earlier, because I haven't given not one lick of advice. <laughs> you probably give us some good advice. Take though. heed to the advice that Riss gave you earlier, and make sure you manage it now when <laughs> all these opportunities come. So definitely want to give that, um, you know, tidbit out there, because I know there are some people who maybe now they're at a point in life where they can really start to explore, you know, some some opportunities. So um, definitely that, uh, you know, I, I'm. Thankful, Marissa, for you helping me in this therapy session today. <laughs> You're so goofy. <laughs> and uh, I will make sure to take notes okay. uh, and, and start to, to implement this. And, and for you all listening out there, if you have uh, any words of advice or anything you would like to share, again, you can just send the email straight to me, uh, Courtney. He's so um, Definitely, we're open to all the feedback at the uh, Twin Theory Podcasters at Gmail. 
um, if you want to send us um, any comments that you have there as well as the YouTube. Um, but before we let you all go for today, there there is some exciting news that uh, we did want to share with you all, and I'm I'm going to let Marissa share that with you. So the exciting news, uh, of course, this is Twin Theory Podcast. So we have to talk about twins at some point, right? So Courtney and I are going to be doing a twin series starting in 2021. We'll do a couple of episodes where we talk about nothing but twins. So get ready if you want to know any and everything about twins, what it's like, common questions we get, just the whole nine. We plan to talk about twins to the fullest. So those are some episodes to look forward to. And um, if you have any questions that you ever wanted to ask, say twins, it doesn't have to be us, but twins in general, <laughs> um, you can send that to us. You know, you can send it to twin theory podcasters at gmail.com. And we'll try to answer some of your questions during some of those episodes as well. So that's exciting. Get ready for the twin series. We're going to quit, uh, uh, kick that off at the beginning of 2021. So get ready for that one. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's going to be a great series. It's going to be a, a tell all, a tell most. How about not tell all? There's some things we just yeah, have so to keep. Some things there. we got to keep. Some yeah. things we have to keep uh, true to the twin honor code. Yes. And we just cannot let you guys. You just we, don't we know. Can't so, violate. So code sorry. The code. So sorry. Can't let you know that. But yes, definitely that's something to look forward into. Twenty twenty one. Um, definitely, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Today to the episode, again, um, hit us with an email if you have any uh, suggestions, any feedback, any comments. Also, for those that are subscribed to our YouTube channels, make sure you can leave a comment there as well. Uh, we are now up on Amazon Podcast. Yay. Yay! And we will very soon be up on, on Pandora. So those are some other platforms you can listen to us on. Uh, for those that, uh, you know, do listen to us on platforms where you can leave comments, please leave comments. We check uh, to see, you know, what comments and feedback that you do have. So we do just appreciate you all tuning in. I hope that you all um, are having a fantastic fall and are staying warm and, and eating all the pumpkin spice and, and was it was apple spice and apple cider. Apple cider. And... Oh, I got some apple cider that was delicious. <laughs> uh, but definitely, I hope you all are enjoying this fall weather. And we will talk to you all next time. Oh, there's but, one more yes, thing. There's oh. two more things. Yeah. One, wear your mask. Wait, oh, yeah. And two, register to vote. Oh, yes. You have to make sure you vote, okay? We are on the countdown to voting, Ugh. right? If you haven't already, because I know some areas you're able to vote now, but if you're going in person November 3rd, so voting, you got to make sure you do it, y'all. De definitely, definitely. That is a that's a huge point. Definitely continue to wear your mask and vote. Go mm -hmm. vote, please go vote. Um, you do not have to go in person. You can mail in your ballot, or you can take it to a ballot box somewhere. Just you can go online and look up whatever state that you're listening. You know, from if you're listening from a state, we're talking about the U.S. election because I know some people listen from overseas. So I don't know what y'all doing over there, but we have an election coming up there. We need everyone, everybody, everybody that's of legal age. Please vote. All right, and we are out. Bye.